because some time ago I picked up this PlayStation 3 Slim Edition and it has been completely modified from the inside but also from the outside. And in this video I will tell you why I picked this up and I just want to have this machine in my collection. So but let's talk about the PlayStation 3 because the PlayStation 3 has a really fun memories with me. I still own myself the first model, not like the first first, like the 16 GB that also had the backwards compatible with PlayStation 2. No, I don't have that one. And the reason why, because most of them will break in the end, because these things were overheating. This is more like the later version, I think it was the 160 GB edition, and it was slightly better with some improvements, but still, it's getting really hot. This beefcake of a system, I find it super fascinating, the way how they made it back in the day. And not to forget the marketing. They had the same idea like the PlayStation 2, so you can use this thing like a game system, but also watch some videos. PlayStation 2 had a DVD player, and the PlayStation 3 had of course the Blu-ray player. And back in the day, when with 1080p, Samsung television, I really loved it. It was just an amazing new experience. So this machine has been soft modded, and has a lot of new functionalities that you don't have with the original one. But this is not said that I want to have this machine so I can basically upload all of my games and play them from the hard disk. Because I don't have a problem with physical media in combination with collecting. I love it. And these games are freaking cheap, or most of them. But what I want to have is more like this ultimate PlayStation 3, simply because I love the machine for what it is. Okay, so the Slim Edition I've picked up is a very special one because it has not only been soft modded but also have been included with a special custom shell. You can still find them here and there, maybe on eBay or other pages. And there are, by the way, other calls out there on AliExpress. But this was more like a very nice skin you can buy. They were not very expensive. I think they were around $65, $75. Of course, you need to disassemble and assemble your own PlayStation. But when I find a handheld or a game console with a translucent casing, I can't help myself, I need to have it. It's such a cool device, it's just bringing, in my opinion, this thing to the next level. And that's the reason I picked it up. I didn't make it myself, simply because if you need to buy a PS3 Slim, you need to modify it in every single way, it is not really a cost effective thing. So I just picked it up and I was more like, hey, I just picking it up, it's in good condition. And let's show you here on the channel what you can make even in 2021. And if you can find a machine like this, how cool would it be to have it in your collection? Okay, but let's do a quick overview of all the mods. Let's talk about the case mods. So the case mod is the XCM Cyberbot PlayStation 3 Slim case in combination with the XCM LED fan. The soft mod gives you a lot of new potential like loading up PlayStation 1 but also PlayStation 2 games. Not through the drive, but we're going to get later into that. Also having the option for PlayStation Portable games, Retro Arc, and it gives us the option to play old school retro games like NES, Super NES, Mega Drive, Game Boy, Arcade, Neo Geo, and way more. But take a consideration is that when you want to play Retro Arc, it has some limitation. So for the 8 bit, 16 bit stuff, arcade, it's all fine. When you're going to get to 64, it's a little bit of a mixed bag over there. So take that in consideration. But let's do a quick chat chat about the controller. So the controller itself, I don't know if it's an original one, I know they sold it like transparent versions, but looking at the sticker, it looks kind of fishy. And also when I try to play with it, it feels completely different, not with the shoulder buttons, especially with the right analog stick and the buttons, they feel just off. The right joystick is, hmm, no, no. So it's really cool to have this, but this is going to be one of my less favorite ones, because I'm guessing it's a fake one. But what I really find appealing to this system, not that it looks even cool and it has a soft mod and we can play retro games, but we can basically play PlayStation 1, 2 and 3, one of my three favorite systems. So that was one of the reasons why I picked it up. So with a non-soft mod version, we can play a lot of PlayStation 1 games. So that is not a big of a deal if you ask me. Still, it was not perfect because some of the games didn't give me any image due of the different signal output. But when I tried to put a PlayStation 2 game in this machine, it completely froze. And so there's a little bit of a bummer, so the only way you can play PlayStation 2 games if you're going to load them from the hard drive. Alright, so let's flip this system upside down. And the reason why, not only I wanted to show you the bottom part, because it looks kind of cool, you're still looking at the EO shielding, but I also want to talk about the hard drive. 
This is one of the other modifications. It's not really a modification. They swapped out the hard drive with a 1.5 terabyte. And I can tell you, you're going to need it because the PlayStation 3 games are gigantic. Okay, so the 1.5 terabyte is the maximum capacity a PlayStation 3 can get what I have understand of. But what I think is really cool, and I maybe in the future will do this, will upgrade my PlayStation 3 with an SSD. The loading times will slightly be better. It's not a big improvement I've seen with some games. Maybe if you're going to play GTA 5 or 4, it will give them like a big advantage. But I think it's more like we don't have a spinning disc and a SSD is in many ways better. The casing itself still is not transparent on the back part simply because there are some parts that you can see from the outside and are not swapped out internally. Another thing is cool is of course the LED fan. The LED fan is more like a tiny addition, a little bit of an overkill because yeah, we don't need it, but it's always really cool to have it in your system because now with the transparent casing we can look at it. Another part of this kit was the transparent casing for your Blu-ray drive. The only downside I did find with this is that when you want to put in your disc, you need to push it in a little bit farther because it has some problems getting or pulling in the disc. But overall, I didn't have any other issues and I think it's just a really cool thing to see your disc spinning. And again, in combination with a transparent casing, it's just freaking awesome. But let's take a close look at the software itself. So the first thing I find pretty cool, so you can even with a soft mod, giving this thing a completely different intro. Like with the original weird PlayStation 3 intro, I didn't like it at all, so why not give this thing the original PlayStation 1 intro? I think more like these minor things you can do with it, and it's just freaking awesome. The firmware itself looks very similar like the original with some minor adjustments. But of course, we're having so much new options like RetroArch, we can now play games from the hard disk, and we can just add them through FTP server and connecting this PlayStation 3 to our network. And when I was making this video a couple of days ago, that PlayStation 3 announced that they are not going to continue the official PlayStation 3 store. So yeah, we're not going to even use it in the future. There are some programs installed like the Rebook Toolbox, where you can do reconfiguring of the backend. So here we can basically change the language, restart system, boot other OS. If you want to have some configuration with the emulators or let's say the places to emulate you have some problems, you can mess around with it here. So there is what the toolbox is for. If you want to have more information, there are some tutorials out there that will explain into depth what you can do with this and how everything works. But I just want to give you a quick overview. So besides playing the games like PlayStation 1, 2 and 3 from the hard drive, RetroArch is one of these great options. But I understand though that it is not really optimized for the PlayStation 3 at the moment making this video. So N64 will not run perfectly. So this is just more like if you want to play some old games from handhelds up to 8-bit, 16-bit, it runs just fine. So when playing Sonic the Hedgehog, you can see that the game runs very well. And I think it's just a fun addition to play these old school 16-bit games on your PlayStation 3. What I really like about RetroArch that we're still having the option like with the handhelds that we can just do a quick load, quick save and all these awesome things you can do with it. So RetroArch I think is a great addition. We can also play some handheld games. So they look quite weird in my opinion on this big screen. But it's just a fun addition again to play these old school games. But if you wanted to play some games like 16-bit, you can also do this on different systems. So this reason why I said it a couple of times in this video is more like an extra thing you can do with it. If you want to play like dedication retro games on the system, there are way better options out there that has a way better support. So and again, it's fun to see this game running. And if you're done playing, you can just quit the retro arc and go back to the main menu. All right.
right, so let's take a close look at the software. So if you want to add your game through FTP server, you need to drop them in a folder like PlayStation 1, 2, 3 or the PlayStation Portable. And from this point on, you can basically load up your games and play them from the hard drive. What I find very convenient with this is that even with a spinning disk, the loading times are significant shorter than when loading it from a disk. So basically what you're going to do is when you boot up a game, it basically shows it like a normal game and you can boot it up like a physical disk. But okay, so I think it's not super convenient to load up the games from PlayStation 3 from your hard disk because they will take up too much space. Maybe it's a fun idea to add your favorite games that you mostly play from the PlayStation 3, but you can still use your physical games without any problems or not with me. I tried a couple of them and they booted up without any issues. So the machine itself has a 1.5 terabyte hard disk and if you want to storage a lot of places you do games that is possible because most of these games are around 600 up to let's say 4 gigabytes for each game so that makes it really convenient so if you want to play some San Andreas on your PlayStation 3 it's now possible. So far I know you can play PlayStation 1 games from disk on a lot of PlayStation 3s. I did notice in the past when I trying out my collection that not every game was booting up. But I just tried Bloody Roar 2 for example and the game runs really good. And I was very pleased to see that we can play them from the hard drive. These games are super small so around 600 megabytes for each game. So with the 1.5 terabyte hard disk internally we can store a lot of games. So when you're looking at let's say the PlayStation 3 with the loading games or the PlayStation 1, 2 and 3. I think the most convenient are the 1 and 2, simply because of the size. I hope you really enjoyed this video, I did making it. So the PlayStation 3 Slim Custom Edition is the most ultimate and naughty way you can go. Nowadays the PlayStation 3 can be picked up for very cheap. Of course if you want to get a very special one like this, it's always freaking expensive. Or maybe you can find the parts and you can build it yourself. I know on AliExpress there are still some of these cases laying around different colors, I don't know if they are transparent. But I think you need to be a big PlayStation 3 fan, because mainly you will shall play PlayStation 1, 2 and 3 games. You can play some old school 8-bit, 60-bit stuff, but let's be honest, there are so many ways out there you can play those games. Nevertheless, I hope you really enjoyed this video, I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit that little bell, become on the Wicked family, and it will be great to see you in the next video.